In this video, I'm going to give you a power introduction to how artificial intelligence can help make real-time decisions in games, simulations, or any kind of applications. Let's take a look at some examples. So the typical one is what item to select, like a spell or a weapon, if you're in some kind of role-playing game or combat game, or deciding exactly who to target. So if the enemies need to pick someone to cast their spell on, uh, deciding where they should move of all the many options, where they should take cover or hide and uh, which path to take when they're retreating. Uh, the different groups that should be assigned by some kind of strategic commander, for example, in a real-time strategy game, uh, deciding what to build or to research, or the type of content that should be displayed uh, within an application. For example, if you want a, a player to really enjoy the next quest, what, what quest should you select for that player? and deciding exactly uh, where to drive or steer or any kind of uh, skill-based uh, decision. Or finally, um, just in general, how to behave. Which behavior do you pick of all the different possible options in a game? There are common patterns behind each of these different examples. So let's look at those now. And it's important to understand this so that we can uh, establish a common base as we move forward. You'll need typically two options to be able to make a decision. If you don't have uh, any more than two options, then there's no choice to be made. So that's easy enough. And these choices are typically generated by your application. So you have an application which will list all the things that it, it considers valid options. And then those options need to be uh, processed somehow and turned into uh, actual decisions. It's useful for those decisions to be ranked sometimes, like this is the best decision, the second best decision, uh, gives you more flexibility. The key thing to keep in mind is what problem you're trying to solve. What is the purpose of this decision? And that um, helps build a system that will make these decisions for you. So the best practices typically involve building a custom data structure that will um, help represent the problem domain. So it could be uh, uh, representing the world or all the, the cover points nearby, all the different pieces of content and different annotations. And with that, you can efficiently generate lots of different options at runtime uh, to pick from. And so these options will then typically be scored, um, for example, within a range of uh, zero to one. And once we've given them a score, we can narrow down that process and then go through another um, selection process of deciding which one to actually pick. Um, so that's kind of the last uh, final phase. And then the decision is made and we can just execute it. And this is pretty much the common architecture behind most of the systems that I showed you in the examples. Most games will do this. So let's take a look at some of the common problems that come up when you apply this type of architecture. So the first one is that um, the equations that you write to perform the scoring, they need to be written by hand and they can get pretty complex and you have to deal with that complexity somehow. You can make things more modular, but that was also uh, a bit harder for you to understand at first glance. Second one is understanding uh, the impact of the decisions that are made. So if the AI makes one particular choice, what impact is that going to have? And most of the time, you will have some intended impact in mind when you write the code in the first place. So you either need to foresee that yourself whilst you're designing your application or do some processing at runtime to figure that out. Another thing that's very useful is to speed up the process with which these equations can be written and how these decision processes are actually authored. It can take a long time to build and to test and to tune these things. So any speed improvement helps a lot. And finally, having some kind of runtime adaptation is also very useful. You can predict beforehand a lot of things about how the player is going to behave, but there are certain things that you have to wait until the actual runtime to be able to know exactly what the player is going to do and then make some tweaks and uh, changes dynamically uh, as the game is running. And this is probably uh, the hardest one. So what is the state of the art in solving these problems? Well, the first would be uh, user interfaces and creating nice front ends that allow you to display the equations and the components of each of the curves and seeing what the scoring functions look like and then using um, concepts that help uh, break down certain equations more modularly. Um, and this helps a lot. A second approach, which is um, more new and innovative, is to use machine learning. And 
the idea is that we use algorithms to uh, model the equations that we want. If we know we want a certain result, then we can tell the system and it will build these equations and, and uh, decisions for us. Um, games like Drive Attire use machine learning so they can approximate the driving skills of any player and have them play against their friends when they're not online. And Killer Instinct, for example, uses a form of machine learning case-based uh, online uh, within the game so it, the opponent can fight against the player in an adaptive way. A third solution is to use tree search. And tree search lets you figure out what's going to happen in the future once you've applied a certain decision. And uh, games like Total War or, for example, the uh, new Fable Legends actually uses Monte Carlo tree search at runtime to figure out how to um, coordinate and how to assign the different enemies so that the intended outcome plays out. And you don't have to spend all your time writing these equations. The system can figure it out. And that's why we use AI, right? On July 20th at the Nuclei AI conference and on the online stream, we'll be covering these topics in particular. And the first one, the big one, is Monte Carlo Tree Search. And we'll look at it from the perspective of developers who used to write very uh, hand-made and very finely crafted equations and how they switched over into using more advanced AI search-based techniques uh, and applying those into their games. Those examples are uh, Fable Legends, as I mentioned, and uh, Total War, Attila. A second set of topics that we'll also look at is uh, neural networks and deep learning. Of course, within the Drivatar example that I mentioned earlier, that's our Trek keynote for the real-time decisions Trek, but also looking at it from the perspective of um, learning preferences of gameplay from Dota 2 replays, which will be one of our workshops in the morning. And another one is also uh, applying uh, deep reinforcement learning to the Atari uh, type games. So like uh, Google solved recently. So we'll have a masterclass on how exactly that works and uh, understanding those problems better. Also from the perspective of solving actually practical problems. And this track on real-time decisions ties in very well to the behaviors track, which will be on Tuesday 21st, as well as the analytics track. And so there'll be more talks on this topic as well. And so whether you can join us online and watching the stream for free, or whether you want to join us in person and actually talk about this, um, then we welcome you on site as well. Go and grab your tickets online, just go to the website. And if you're uh, keen to watch, make sure you subscribe to the social media and then we'll let you know exactly how to access the stream.